is a theoretical okay, position. Even not, even this is a theoretical position. But simultaneously, you can say, you know, there are so many children on the planet, why should it matter? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, all the fucking right to life. It's no, just one guy off his own. Sorry, should everyone get welfare? Yes. You tell you rich people? Yes. So rich people should get welfare. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Okay, okay, okay. So do you believe that murder is wrong? Yes. Does that include Hitler? Yes. So it's Hitler wrong to wrong. kill Hitler. Yes, 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 well, there you go. Yes, it's, uh, sucked in. it's a week since the arts faculty's annual review closed for another year, and the cast are still celebrating. As in any student gathering, there's much heated debate about the important intellectual ideas of the moment and other matters. Let me say, poo on its own is, is, is mildly funny. <laughs> to be very funny, it has to be in a context. You have to put the poo, you know, into a Methuselah of champagne. Or you have to do a poo on Le Train de Grand Vitesse. <laughs> then it's funny. But I'm just a poo, the concept of, the concept of poo is not funny on its own. That's mine, that's mine. I'll think of one context in which it's not funny. <laughs> Pooing in the toilet is not funny. <laughs> That is just normal. <laughs> Although everybody laughed when I said it, so what did that say for you? <laughs> On King Street they're closing the cafes at two. We're at the Marlboro with nothing to do. My head's gonna burst into the postmodern blue. I don't know what that means, but then neither do you. I don't know what that means, but then neither do you. Tomorrow I'll be 30 years old If my body is for sale and it's sold It's been carved out in six carat gold And all that I need is my skeleton attitude I only believe what I'm told I only believe what I'm told Yeah, in the terrace house, kids are all stretched on the floor. He's picking at the car, but she's studying law. They don't have free love and they don't have a war. Well, what the hell are these young people for? Get right. What the you hell are the these young people for? for an It's springtime at Sydney University, and there's a war going on. You know, guys, that is really dumb. What? Because all it means now is that I'm going to poster over the top of it, so you've wasted your own poster. Right, but we just put those up and you've just gone over the top of them, so why'd you do that? It's the same thing, isn't it? It's time to elect a new president of the Student Council, or SRC. No prisoners are taken in the fiercely factional world of student politics. What better place for our brightest young men and women to learn the dark skills they need to become tomorrow's leaders? I don't understand how anybody can take university politics seriously. Like, it's just... Let's work out. No, but, I mean, you have to... Like, if you're going to run... You, yeah, no, I mean, you, no, you're no, I mean there's serious these issues, anyway. but when, when, you, when you talk about... When you talk about them, they <laughs> sound so wanky. Yeah, 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 exactly. After two failed attempts to get elected himself, Charles, Labour left, is desperate to oust his bitter rivals, the far left. I reckon you should say I was thinking of running for president. His daring new plan is to run his friend Sholto, the highly popular star of the Arts Review, for president. I, I, I can't just say, um, what can I say? Hello, uh, my name is Sholto Macpherson. I'm running for SRC. Uh, me and my team, we believe in... Uh, uh, what, what do I say? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I say, I say, uh, the SRC isn't running as efficiently as it could be. You know, they spend 51% of the budget on administration right there. Uh, I think that the SRC needs to function well so that we can fight cuts and all that. That's what I say. 
Fight cuts. Fight cuts, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we can post it. We were just going to leaflet and stuff, but we can go post it. This is the person Charles and Sholto are so keen to beat. Katrina represents C, the far left faction who've held presidency on campus for the last eight years. They're just dropping leaflets everywhere, and I don't think they're going to do them that much good. Can I have your attention, please? Picture yourself just over a week from today. Sholto McPherson loses the election. I want to be president, it's not fair. <laughs> Look at this display! But now, thanks to yourself, just over a week from today, Sholto McPherson wins! Yes! I did it! Oh, yes! Uh, Look, you don't even care who wins, so you might as well avoid a tantrum! Yes! Vote one! Yes! Sholto McPherson, press off seat. Hi, I'm Katrina, I'm running for... SRC president with a group called C, which is Students for Education Action. Um, we're a group who believe that education issues must be prioritised by the SRC, particularly given the current context of higher education with a new Liberal government who are making huge attacks on education, the new Vice-Chancellor that we have and a university administration that's as hostile as ever. It's more vital now than ever that you actually do vote for an active and committed and effective SRC who will put your interests first. Oh dear. Did it lack delivery? Wasn't it? Wasn't I convincing enough? It just flopped so badly. <laughs> so Charles, is Shelter really presidential material? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it'll be a very different type of prison. See, it's just about um, potentials. Like, one of the reasons why Shelter isn't perceived as being presidential material is because he'll be the first of that sort of president. Like, because for the last seven or however many years, you've had a boring institutional bureaucratic president. He, he could get, you know, a theatre sports type crowd out to a rally instead of, you know, the three sad people who paint banners down at the SSE. Hi. What's up? I'm here to give you an, yet another leaflet about SRC elections. You've come to me three times already. Have I? Yeah. Did so you, you look very familiar, there? I thought. Once there, once down at, at Wentworth. It's, <laughs> it's because I turned into a complete machine during election time. People are going, hi, I'm Katrina, blah, blah, blah. Because I've seen you at the lawn. I know I've seen you. Oh, yeah, up there this morning. Because I think you're in one of my classes. I uh, don't. What, 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 what are you doing? What year Third year? Maybe not. Definitely not. <laughs> what, what year are you in? I'm second year. So why do you want to be president? Oh, gosh. Um, there's actually quite a lot of reasons. I mean, the main reason is I want the left to have president. Even if it wasn't me, I'd be campaigning full time for... Like, I think it is really important that you do have a left person on there, someone who is supporting the collectives, who is independent of party politics and who is um, really committed to defending higher education. And also, because I think a lot of people and a lot of the candidates who are running do have the attitude of, oh, well, we won't make a difference. Rallyings, it achieves nothing. So they don't want to promote those activities where I think it's really vital that the SRC does. This is the C election. We love C, we love blue stocking, we love smash racism, although I'm white, white Anglo trash, we still love smash racism. Now uh, change with me this table here, one, two, three, C, one, two, three, C. There's a week till polling day and a mid-semester break, a week for the candidates to chase their political dreams and a week for everybody else to get their essays in before exams start. I was beginning to wonder what it was like for the students too busy to worry about politics and reviews. Then I met Cal. Studying psychology in an arts degree, majoring in psychology. What's it like? I like psychology, but I hate the other subjects, so I'm dragging myself to uni every day and really not enjoying it at all. But I have to keep going because I've wasted three years if I, if I don't. What about all this fun going on over here with sunlight and elections and all the jouissance and joie de vivre? Doesn't that excite you? Not the slightest. I don't care who gets president. I don't. It makes no difference to me. Like I've seen them come and go, and it hasn't changed my experience at uni whatsoever. Who is elected? So <laughs> all they do is come around and hassle you anyway with pamphlets and why you should vote for them. And I've never even voted because they don't care. This is pretty much it. This is our dining table. We, we sit on the floor for dinner, when we have dinner. It's just our living room here. 
This is the kitchen. For the first time in her life, Cal's living in her own place. The youngest of three children, she moved out of the family home when her mother recently remarried. That's our lovely view outside. Right next door to... A wall. A wall, which is the base of a gigantic aerial. I've just started to pay off my new bed. It's one of the th million things that I'm currently paying off. Computer, I just finished paying off last year. I had to have that. I did first year at uni without a computer and it was just really annoying having to queue up at the uni to use the um, computers there. So I invested in a computer and a printer. Why aren't you having more fun at uni? Because I, I can't. I, the, the days where I'm at uni, I've got, you know, straight lectures and then I'm, you know, go straight from uni to, to my job. Like, I'll finish uni at two and I start work at four, you know, an hour away from there. And there's, you know, occasionally I go to the, you know, the parties at uni, but um, not very often because I'm just, I'm always, I work Thursday, Friday nights. And that just leaves, I work all day Saturday and <laughs> I'm diet on Saturday and there's got to be some time for, you know, essays and that sort of thing. And um, so I just don't get enough time to get into the fun side of uni and I, I, wish, I wish I did. Probably will next year. Back at uni, the battle for political supremacy on campus is hotting up. Very important that you vote in these elections. The whole world revolves around the SRC. Um, and if you don't vote, then um, everybody's going to die. I'm running on a ticket called Reform, and you've probably seen lots of our stuff around campus. What we're trying to do is to change the SRC to actually make it do things for students. The third presidential candidate is Georgina. Though she's backed by the Liberal Club on campus, she doesn't want to be linked with the unpopular Liberal government, so she's called her party Reform. So if you want an SRC that is actually going to do more than just go down and, and throw rocks at some BHP office, you should vote for a change, you should vote for reform, you should vote for me, that would be. Um, so please, please support a change to make the SRC actually work for all of you guys. Thank you. Okay, I'll just take a minute of your time as well. Uh, we've just heard from Georgina. Quite interesting, the things she's talking about, plus the funding is actually uh, brought about by the party she represents, the Liberal Party. But I'm not here to talk about that um, today, it's the Venice launch. Um, so, uh, 5.30, the home building. That is one of the most pathetic things I've ever seen done. <laughs> no. I think you are the most pathetic thing I've ever seen in student politics. It's not too bad. I guess we just become a convenient scapegoat for everybody. They think we're easy to attack on things and so they all pick us to attack. But it's stupid because they're all willing to do preference deals with us and all this kind of crap, so they're happy to take our votes. No matter what you hear from the Liberal students, you know, no matter how good their pamphlets make you feel, just remember that it's the wrong message to send Liberal students into the SRC. It's saying to Amanda Vanstone, yeah, <clears throat> A $20,000 threshold for HEX repayments, yeah, we sort of like that. We can be bashed around a bit and, and we'll accept it. So that is the reason why you should vote, not for Liberal students, not for the current administration, but for Labor students on the SRC. Well, what a, what a crock, Charles. I mean, Liberal students have been committed to protest and committed to rallies since before the Liberal Party was formed. It's become clear that nobody will win this election outright. The key lies in the preference votes. And guess who holds that key? The party everyone loves to hate, the Liberals. And, and every single reform how to vote and separate presidential flag, they both will have the how to vote on the back. It's handed out on the day and from now on. It says vote one Georgina, two Shelter. Charles's only hope of getting Shelter elected is to do a deal for Georgina's preferences. And like it or not, it's Tony, Liberal president, he must deal with. You've got to understand the situation that I'm in, in terms of, like, there is absolute pressure, like, universal pressure from my caucus um, for Shelter not to preference Georgina. 
Like, like because it is, it would be a national disgrace if, you know, in the year that the Libs got into power um, nationally, Labor left, so-called, you know, and that demon Charles Firth or whatever delivered the SRC presidency to, to the Libs. Even if I think George comes second, I don't think there'll be enough of Shadow's votes flying across. With or without, you know, the tribes coming out of it. We want it because it just gives us a chance and it's something to work for. And at the end of the day, there is a slight chance. I mean, that's what you're saying. There's a chance. The other thing um, is, um, if we do sign off, um, can we not say that we've signed off sure. by, like publicly? Um, just because, like, they will cheat cheaters. And at the moment, we can just say, no, the libs are just like giving uh, us the preferences and everything. So, so, so we've got to sign off the deal with Tony tonight, or we should. We don't What's have that to. For, for his twos to go to Shelter. So, t so Tony plus Georgina just have to outpoll Emma between them, and then oh, and Shelter, easily, and then easily Shelter, they will. And, and if they do that, as, or as long as Shelter is within within reach of Katrina, when he beats Georgina, then it's then it's okay. Yeah, if he beats Georgina, yeah. that's the contest. That's right. The contest is between you and Georgina. Why don't you think you're going to get in, George? I was thinking about this last night. I think our our message, our campaign, is um, is targeted at a group of people all across campus who um, usually don't vote. And so the battle for us is to get the reform message out there to them to vote. And I don't think we've done that well enough. And I don't think we've done it substantially enough to be able to overcome the juggernaut that is the C campaign. They just seem to be able to get a lot of people out doing stuff um, because a lot of their people are highly ideological and are willing to spend a shitload of time doing stuff. What time did you start this morning, Katrina? Um, I got to uni at eight. So. How's it going? Um, good. Do you feel good about the campaign? Um, pretty good. I mean, it's okay today. There's a few things around. Like, it's just I was meant to go to Cumberland this morning and didn't go, so that was a problem. But um, generally, I don't know. I mean, I think we'll do well on primaries. I'm just still yet to see what Sholto and... Georgina are doing about preferences. Oh, I mean, I know Georgina's will go to Shalto. I'm just not sure what Shalto's are doing. And I think his will probably make the difference in terms of, um, like, what the eventual result will be. Because I think we'll win on primaries. Perfect. Georgina, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? I really don't know, and that scares the shit out of me. Um. After falling sick last semester, Cal's way behind with her work. She's already repeating second year and must get her latest assignment in by 9am tomorrow or forfeit 10% from her final degree result. So when did you finish this essay, Cal? Quarter to five this morning. It's my pride and joy. Really hoping he's not going to be there. God. I'd had a 5% chance of getting through the semester. So funny not not after your session, but uh -huh. when I panicked at home about the essay. Uh -huh. In fact, I, I, so it feels that, that was the first time this semester when I was panicking, uh, I said, I actually thought of it, quitting. I thought Cal still quitting. got three essays to do and an important spoken presentation. 
She's been seeing a student counsellor to help her organise her timetable. If she fails a subject, it means another year at uni. So really, like, is it worth doing all this work? Can I do all this work for starters? Is it worth it? And um, should I just quit and, and work full time and have lots of money? You know, it's a great temptation. But um, and that scared me that that because I all semester I, that thought I hadn't let that thought wander in my mind because that's the thought that wandered into my mind last year that ended up you know uh -huh. in yeah. pulling out. I've got to give a, a presentation. I'll have to find out. It's either next Monday or the Monday after. And, you know, that's a lot of. There are a lot of work. These things you have to read dozens and dozens of articles and then present it to the class. And, uh, at least there's. Um, I can't be late with <laughs> the presentation, really, can I? I'm either there or I'm not. <laughs> I guess that's the, that's the only option, isn't it? Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. It's like exams. Yeah. I just you've done a preference deal with you. I haven't done a deal with anybody at the moment. You but, wouldn't lie to me though, would you? No, I swear at this moment I have not, but I'm seriously <laughs> concerned. To help get the Liberals into SRC a few times. But that, that's the point. I'm, that's not, I'm, getting the, I'm getting the backing to help me get in, not, not get them in. But what if you don't get in? Well, do you seriously think the Liberals and me would outpoll you in the right? I, I really don't want this campaign to get too nasty. I mean, I don't see the point. Charlotte, if you're doing a deal with the Libs, I mean, I don't want this to get nasty either yeah. because, I mean, it's particularly bad for me as well. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm just saying things probably are. Word is out of Sholto's planned deal with the Liberals. Katrina is furious with Charles. He may be from a rival faction, but they're still both from the left. To deal with the Liberals is unthinkable. Like Katrina has just said there, we're going to shit shit you and say you're doing kills. I mean, if you guys aren't willing to preference us... It's not that, like, like I would... Yeah. And so I what would... if that means we don't preference Shalto and then nobody has any hope of being Katrina? You'd rather just run Shalto, do reasonably well and get nowhere, and it would all be for nothing. <laughs> so what's the risk? The risk is that Georgina will get in, but um, I don't care <laughs> much. No, like it's a risk. I think it's a risk worth taking, and I don't think he, I don't think she will. <coughs> Won't she? No, because um, because I think. Cholto's preferences won't flow solidly enough to Georgina to do that. I think it's worth signing off a deal with them. Charles just doesn't care about anything. Like, he just, he hates us for past things that have happened and, I mean, a lot of reasons. And, I, I mean, I used to actually be kind of friends with Charles in first year, so, but I don't think he's the same person at all anymore. Mm -hmm. He, um, I mean, he is just completely motivated by bitterness and, oh, well, we'll get them and... I actually don't really care. I used to get upset when I had fights with Charles, but now, I mean, I just kind of roll my ass and go, oh, well, that's Charles. <laughs> Cal struggling with her least favourite subject, the history of education. She's left herself only three days to prepare her crucial spoken presentation. She must get a pass mark in this or she's out of the course. Hey. It's Friday afternoon and the last chance to get the book she needs before the weekend. It's very rare to find the book you're looking for. It's an unbelievable thing when it happens. Why is it rare? I don't know, they're just never there. The computer says there should be six or seven of them on the shelf and they get there and there's none. That's probably right. Hey! hey. Do you know about your overdue items? Are they overdue already? Yeah, pass one can I thought I had them for two weeks. It's... Uh... 
Yeah, no, the three of them are all mm. you from the eighth of the four. From the eighth. So I can't borrow, can I? Okay. That's okay. Where can I put this? Thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> Life is never easy. What's that about? <laughs> I got overdue books. I thought they were two weeks, but they were one week loans. So I cannot borrow until I return them. I don't have them here with me. <sighs> Where does that leave you with your presentation then? Stuffed. <laughs> so I'm working all day tomorrow, I can't come here then. I'm probably working Sunday as well, I can't come here then. So that's, that's that. So Shelter, what's meant to be happening at the moment? Uh, just not, not too much, just going out and winning the campaign. Where's Charles? Sitting at home, wallowing in self-pity. How unusual. So what's the matter, Charles? Nothing, I'm just having a break. You don't seem very engaged in the election campaign. No. Why not? Um. I don't know. I genuinely don't know and I don't really care. I can maybe mock Katrina, but like... Like I don't despise her or anything and I think probably some of the things that she said, you know, about me running on bitterness and being completely... sort of embittered and cynical and everything, you know, probably quite true. And it's just sort of, it's wearing. There seems to be quite a lot of emotions in politics. It's something um, mm, it does. It it gets you. It gets you because you don't get much sleep, or you you don't get much good sleep, and you get stressed, and then you have to deal with people, and like you have to deal with like conflict, which never happens in real life. In real life, you don't have people sort of hating you and things like that. And and just... And so everybody's rubbing up against each other and it's incredibly wearing down. And and even more wearing down is the fact that it means nothing. Like, it's so petty. Like, you, you get worked up and washed out over something which matters so little. Yes, how are you? Have you had your whiskey? Not yet. Not yet. Deary me. I'll see what I can do. Will you? Yes. I know you will too. Yes, you do. And, and don't, don't worry. I know you're on my side. I'll, I'll go and get it now. How's that sound? Has she had a, she had a her whiskey? What? Has she had her whiskey? Oh, yeah. I'm sure oh, that she's... must be her cup there in front of us. I'm sure, Mindy would have given it to us. Three nights a week, Cal works in a private nursing home to pay her rent. She gets $9 an hour after tax for working four till midnight. How are you, Mr. Peters? Oh. <laughs> one day you're going to drop one of those, you know? I ain't got one yet. Thank you. I know you love your soup. Have your soup first and I'll come back, okay? Where is the soup? Here? What is it? It's... I think it's potato and leek. Not sure. What's the size of soup? Potato and leek. I do. No. Potato and leek, huh? Well, potato and leeks. The leeks are onions. Oh, well... If you say so. 
That's just what it's called, that's it. Okay, I'm going to heat it up. Uh, I guess it's a bit of a depressing place and they live here full time and I figure if I can cheer their day up a little bit then that's a good thing. That's just what I try to do. They don't cheer you down. They don't get depressed. Oh, sometimes something will happen that's, you know, a bit depressing. But, um, Sometimes it does, yeah. But there are, there are more things that cheer me up than more things that depress me, so. Right. One more. to work I get home and it's everything that I'm still currently paying off is gone. Where's your doona? They took my doona. I just got it two weeks ago. I don't know why they took the doona. They pulled my cupboard apart. They took my computer and my printer which had all my uni stuff on it. So. Oh jeez. Do you think they're still in the building robbing other flats? Oh. Hell, that's terrible. What have they done to your chair? At least they didn't spray paint the walls. <laughs> they haven't taken little things. They just took the computer, the printer, the TV, and the video, and my doona. <laughs> and some CDs. Oh, they took my disc when it's fucking gone. Shit. I only just saw that. <laughs> Where was your disc man? It was right there. Oh, Cal, you've had an unlucky week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just want to... I think I might give up. That's all the money. Everything that I've paid for, like, I'm still paying off half that stuff. And it, it definitely wasn't insured, so... <laughs> what were you paying off? It's paying off the television and the video. I just finished paying off the computer about six months ago. And that's two and a half... That's three hundred... Three and a half thousand dollars worth. Of my hard-earned money. <laughs> I haven't done anything to anyone. <laughs> Unless you got your photos. <laughs> yeah. I'm from the arts faculty. Arts faculty, okay. You don't vote for arts action because there's liberal and doesn't want you vote really. No, I Thank do you. want you vote. I'm not a liberal. <laughs> but the education has to be short time for president. It's polling day and open season on the 70% of students who don't normally bother to vote. It's mine! Get away from him! Hi! Uh, someone's got to attend that vote. Charles has overcome his qualms about the deals he's made. With so many people undecided, it's still anybody's race. It's sort of action-packed and it builds up and there's a crescendo. It's a bit, it's a bit like a long piece of sex. <laughs> it's kept them going. So, Charles, is politics a sex substitute for you? <laughs> well, <laughs> you mentioned it, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Except I've came, campaigned harder for six. <laughs> Have you got any idea how you're doing? After two hours of polling or something, it's impossible to tell. I mean, I'm not feeling very confident. It, it'll be between me and Sholto, but I'm not sure how close it'll be. I mean, I think it'll be very close, but I'm not sure who'll win. I feel like affecting? I did not deserve, you know, to lose all my stuff and yeah. all, that, all that work, like, it's like someone up there is, you know, trying to have a big go at me. I, I, 
I guess I'm, I can hear that immediately now it just feels impossible, it just feels too much mm. and just want the whole thing to go away. I have given up. <laughs> Not so much because of that, I meant, like, it's just that my weekend was taken up. Like, I, I was, I'm under a time limit, as you know, like, it's one thing at a time and I have this much time. I had the weekend to prepare for this thing tonight. And Saturday night just went, because like, the police were there and all this stuff. And then by the time I started doing work for it, I was just, I was just exhausted. It just wasn't making sense. <laughs> and I, I said, that's it, I can't, I made it, actually made the decision last night to um, give up education. Just do psych and Latin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to give up though. I, I'm thinking I'll, I'll go and see the tutor after this. He's in this building. I'm just like, I hope he has <laughs> the sympathy. I don't know what, like, I can't, there's nothing I could do from right now. If I spent the whole day working on it, then possibly I could prepare something. But then I'd miss all these lectures that I have today, and you know, it's just uh, not me. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to be able to finish um, the 2100 course? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, okay. I might come back and see you. <laughs> all right. Otherwise, I'll see you at five. Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Yeah. What have you decided? He just, he just said, um, oh, for, for discontinuing and discontinuing. I just need to know whether you are or not. I'm like, <laughs> I said, can I, is it possible how, I was like, trying to ask him how much work I had to cover, and he's saying, well, really, you should cover all of it. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. And then he gave me a, a few hints on what I could do. Um, as for the essays, I have to discuss that with somebody else. So, I don't know. I, I told him in the end, I said I'd try, but I may come back um, and tell him that I won't be there tonight at five o'clock. So you're gonna try and do the paper tonight? Try, yeah. Today, I've got till, I've got seven hours. But we better get started. Yeah. <laughs> I think I can. No, you can. And you will. Mm. No, no, can you go and do a lecture bash just with Elliot and everybody? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's, the, it's that one. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Go and do it now. Do it now with Brendan. Okay, go. Um, okay, so I can do that. Up. So, what you going to do? Let me hear. Hey, come here. I'm going to start talking. You're just going to go up and say, look, I don't appreciate you wasting my fucking time. <laughs> no, and then, and then um, Elliot's going to jump up and say, look, I don't appreciate you not appreciating him giving his time. And you've got to jump up and say, look, I don't appreciate you <laughs> not appreciating him not appreciating him. Hey. Oh, uh, could I have your attention for a second? Uh, my name is Sholter McPherson. I'm running for SRC president. Uh, I think that the SRC has not been working as it should be. Uh, they're boiling the money on administration and it's completely stuffed for students. Um, if the SRC has to pay second fiddle to student needs, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> That was, yeah, that was good. Let's, Let's do good. it again. <laughs> that, was, that was good. That was good. I love this now how they change their shirts. <laughs> Put their shoulder stuff back on.
does not make sense to me. It becomes a discussion paper. You don't, have to, you don't have to have any answers. You've just got to have some questions. I don't have any questions to ask. <laughs> what is the subject all about? That's the first question. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to work out. It's something that you have to... Hang on a minute. I have the questions here. He has given me some discussion questions. Ring him up and ask him about that. No, I'm not ringing Simon, no. I'll find it. He's... No! You're not allowed to use the ring No. Oh. That's the last vote, though. Thanks, Nathan. Oh, what's that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 I can't believe I spent three fucking years at university and it's all come down to this. to write it out now for the overhead. I think I know what I'm doing. But what's it all about? <laughs> it's about, um... The education system in Britain in the late 1800s not being very advanced in science and technology and being behind France and Germany and technology and the way the government um, set in the reforms to change that and catch up in technology so they wouldn't fall behind industrially. That sort of thing. How did they do that? How did they do it? <laughs> um, they just set up all these schools and colleges and universities for um, education in technology and um, engineering and sciences and that sort of thing. It's like the debate between whether you should study the arts, like the academics, or you should um, go for vo vocational education. Um, so just, I've just lost my train of thought. How long have you got to get ready? I've got an hour and a half. It's got to be ready by? Five. How are you feeling at the moment? I'm petrified. Why are you petrified? I just... It says pressure. You sound like you've got it all taped. Not really. He's gonna... They're gonna ask questions and stuff. I've read... three out of the four readings in three hours. Which, um... I was pretty proud of. Took notes on it at the same time. And I've got at least one class discussion organised. Possibly two. That's brilliant. Yeah. Human capital theory takes its uh, metaphor from where? Where does the metaphor come from? Well, capital as in money. Capital as in money, okay. So the thing about capital as in money is that you invest capital and you get a return. All right? So human capital theory works on the same kind of basis that by investing, in education of the people, you get a return. Are you happy to stay there? Stay here. Um, I'm going to use the overhead. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just first going to talk about the human capital theory um, on the paper by Marginson. Um, 
It's been a very influ influ influential economic theory. Um, it's set the framework of education policies basically since the 1960s. Um, the theory basically is that human beings are measured in terms of their monetary value, their, their own human capital. Um, as self-employed artisans and wage workers, humans became owners of their own human capital. In France and England, and the differences, England was actually very behind in technology in the late 1800s, behind France. Because it had the true there. measure of England's backwardness was right up until the last, 14, the last quarter of the 19th century, they had not begun to develop a system of... So modern time. economics generally see human skills as a key factor in economic competitiveness. Vocational education um, was high, a high priority for policymakers back then to get this sort of thing rolling in England, technological education, to um, increase it economically. <laughs> that was horrific. <laughs> you did it, Cal. You did it. <laughs> I was so bad. <laughs> Why was it bad? <laughs> it was just horrific. You saw it. I've never been that nervous in my life, and I can only attribute it to the fact that this morning I knew nothing. <laughs> I still didn't know anything. <laughs> Sixty-seven. <laughs> There's hope for me yet, Simon. <laughs> Shit. You should buy yourself a drink. I, I think I am. Unbelievable. I, and I, you heard me. I thought this was the, the worst thing I had ever done. Well written, interesting essay. Your summaries of different arguments are perceptive. Nick, what's happening? What's happening? It's too close to call. Um, do you have any figures? Can you can you quote me some primaries? Too close to call. But I think he's being pessimistic. Most interest, I guess, is in these orange sheets. Presidential. Um, it's pretty close. Katrina Curry's got the most, but um, Shorto's just behind, and uh, Georgina's doing all right. So the question is, will Georgina's votes flow onto Shorto? If they do, you might win. It could well, it could well happen. May not, but it may not. It, it, it's uh, it's just too close to call. Is is the uh, is the truth of the matter? You're kidding! He's leaning on primaries. Oh my fucking lord, he's leaning on primaries. High five, Charlie boy, high five. Okay, okay, okay. okay. No, no, but that's including Merriweather, isn't it? Stop uh, coming. No, no, stop the the first past the post right now. You may not win, it's too early to call it. You may change the primaries, but you're doing well. Whatever happens, it's going to be a bloody good answer. Shelter gets above Georgia primaries and shelters up. Cool. This is what I heard. Georgina's playing 66%. Well, is, that, is that true? What, what, what's the case? Oh, really? Oh, you're kidding. Excuse me. Yeah, you have to wait for Charles. Two workers and fighting for our liberty. One is one. Let's the numbers. Charlotte McPherson. Thursday. Okay, this is for Thursday for Wentworth, Fisher, PNR, Merriweather. Charlotte McPherson, 318. Katrina Curry, 270. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Um, um, <laughs> fucking uh, Georgina Inwood, 118. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Emmy McBride, 118. Georgina Inwood, 90. You are joking. Right, careful, right. Careful, careful. careful. We want a 10 percent leak from Emma to us. That's yeah. what we want. We want problem a is, leak. problem is, Georgina's is not flowing to you. Georgina's is flowing sort of dodgily. Hi. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> um, 
they didn't have very many booths counted, but um, in fact they had very little counted, but it, it looks as though um, Katrina's probably going to win. So. She's got no further comment. We're going to have to. T <laughs> She'll make a comment later tonight. <laughs> That's right. They just want to get even more no, drunk or something. <laughs> What about nursing and it's just, The way the preferences are moving, I would say pretty much absolutely, absolutely, without yeah. without doubt, Katrina Curry is going to get on. Oh well, I don't know. Because it's all about preferences, there's nothing else. It's just preferences. You know, nothing to do with the campaign. You alright? Mm. Sorry, to, like bring bad news and all, but. Uh, How do you know Georgina's are going only 25 30%? Based on what we've seen, based on what's there, based on everybody else, what they're saying, what I saw with my own eyes. I saw like the count of a couple of boots, hardly any, so I don't know what it is. It's too early. Relax about the results. We're not going to know until very late tonight. Tony's a fit man. Right. Okay. I can take it. I don't want to show it. Three and a half times more check out. I don't think it is actually better than that. How many votes have they counted now? Yeah, but. You're both here in general. That's like spraying beer on me. Especially from your conscience. No. You knew that it was always going to be an incredibly hard campaign to fight. Hey, Charles! Oh man, it's nothing. It's just such a disappointment. Outsider from the beginning, and you've scared the hopeless. Charles, you ran him first. It's a joke. You thought it'd be funny if he won. <laughs> and it's funny and it would be. So well. It like, would be funny if he won, but he's not going to win because, of course, he's not going to win. Nobody ever thought he was going to win. You've forgotten. You got too involved. And do you think it matters who's SRC president in the long run? Do you think that, that really matters in who loves you and, and who loves Sholto? Fuck no. It doesn't even matter in who loves Katrina. Nobody does. So they think she could probably write the reports better than Shoulder. They probably think she could tick the boxes better than Shoulder. <laughs> Which she could. Anyone could. A monkey could tick the boxes better than Shoulder. A fucking cup of chips could run the SSE better than Shoulder. Who cares? Fuck. Who cares? I mean, put up a fucking good fight and, and I'm happy with that, man. You're in very close. You're very close. That's all right. Another election is over, and Katrina and the far left still run Sydney Uni's student council. Unable to shake off her link with the federal government, Georgina polled poorly, her preferences insufficient to push Sholto over the line. Now, if Charles had done a deal with the Labour right, well, there's always next year. And after getting embroiled in affairs of state, Next week, we experience the even more complex and treacherous Wait, affairs of the heart. Yeah, the terrace house kids are all stretched on the floor. He's picking at the car, but she's studying law. They don't have free love and they don't have a war. Well, what the hell are these young people for? What the hell are these young people for? Tomorrow I'll be 30 years old If my heart's for sale and it's sold I've been beaten out, flattened and rolled And all that I need is my skeleton attitude I only believe what I'm told And I only believe what I'm told